Now that we've covered how to use the Async Task class to manage background threads in an Android app, it's time to start making HTTP requests. In this version of the project, HTTP Client, I already have the code in place to check for network connectivity, and I've already granted the permissions that are required to communicate over the web. Now I'm going to add code to actually make the HTTP request. As I described in a previous movie, the Android SDK has a couple of great classes that you can use, either the HTTP client or HTTP URL connection. In this movie, I'll describe how to use the HTTP client. I'm going to put all of the code you need to make an HTTP request into its own separate class. This will keep it isolated from the rest of the app and make the code more reusable. I'll go to the project's default package and create a new class. And I'll name this new class HTTP Manager. It won't extend any specific superclasses or implement any interfaces. I'll just create the class. I'll set up this class to have a single static method that I'll call getData. I'll start with public, static, and set the return data type to string. I'll name the method getData, and then when this method is called, I'll have the calling context pass in a URI, a uniform resource identifier that identifies the location of the feed on the web that I want to call. It'll be a string, and I'll name it URI. The first step to making the request is to create an instance of the class Android HTTP Client. I'll name the object Client, and I'll instantiate it by calling the new instance method of the class. When you call new instance, you have to pass in a string called the user agent. This is a string identifier that's sent from the client to the server that identifies the nature of the client making the request. This can be any string you want. If you were working in a web browser, the browser would determine the user agent string. I'll just give my string a name of Android agent. The next step is to define the target of the request. I'm going to be executing a simple GET request, similar to the kind of request you make when you type in a URL in a web browser. You wrap this with a class named HTTP GET. This is a member of the package org.apache.http.client.methods. I'll name the object request, and I'll instantiate it with new, and then I'll call a version of the constructor method for the class that accepts a string as the URI. Next, I'll declare a response object, and this is an instance of a class named HTTP response. I'm not going to instantiate it quite yet. I'm going to do that within a try-catch block because I need to handle some potential errors. So now I'll type try, press control space, and create a try-catch block. Within the try block, I only need two lines of code. First, I'm going to execute the request, sending the request to the server and getting back a response object. So I'll start with response equals client.execute, and I'll pass in the request object. The response comes back as this HTTP response class, but to get back the content of the response, you can use a class named entityUtils. It looks like this. Return entity utils. Then I'll call the toString method, and I'll pass in an expression of response.getEntity. I'm getting the entity object of the response object and then using entity utils to transform that into a string and returning that to the calling context. All of the other code I need here is exception handling and cleanup. Within the catch block, I'll add e.printStackTrace, and I'll return null. And then this last step is very important. To prevent a leak, you must close the HTTP client. So I'm going to create a finally block and call client.close. So there are two possible execution paths here. If everything works correctly, then the return statement within the try block will be executed. 
but if I run into an exception, I'll get into the catch block and I'll return null. And that's all the code you need to make the request and get back a response that you can call from anywhere in the Android app. I'll save those changes and go back to my main activity class. In the main activity, when the user presses the action bar item, the menu choice, that triggers on options item selected. And this is where I'm calling the method request data. So now my job is to change this version of the request data method. I'm going to need a URL to request. So I'm going to go to the web browser and I'm going to show you a feed that I'll be using for much of this course. It's at this address, surfaces.hanselandpedal.com slash feeds. There are two files in this public directory, one named flowers.json. That's a static file that returns a JSON formatted response, and flowers.xml, which returns exactly the same data in XML. The XML is a little bit more readable, so I'm going to use that initially. I'll click and copy that URL to the clipboard. Then I'll come back to my code, and I'll go to my request data method, and I'm going to pass in a string. So I'll put in a pair of quotes and paste that URL into place. Now I'll refactor the request data method and have it expect a string that I'll name URI. And then I'll change the way I'm calling the execute method of my async task so that I'm passing that URI in. I no longer need three parameters, I only need one, and that's going to be the target URI of my web service feed. So now, when the user presses the action bar item, I'm calling request data, and I'm telling the async task where the data is that I want to retrieve. Next, I'll go to async task. I'll get rid of this for loop that I was using to demonstrate async task earlier. And I'm going to replace that with a call to my HTTP manager class's static method, get data. When do and background is called, that URI I passed in will be passed in as the first parameter. So I'll pass it to the get data method with params, open bracket, zero, close bracket. Now when I call that method, I'll get back a string, which I'll call content. And then I'll return that content to the calling scope. From there, the return value will be passed into on post execute and it'll be passed from there into update display, and that should result in displaying the XML content in my Android app in the text view. I'll go ahead and run the code first to make sure it's working, then I'll come back and code review this again. I'll save and run, and in the emulator, when the app opens, I'll click Get Data. And after a moment, the XML content from the web is retrieved and displayed in the app. So let's track the code again. When the user selects the action bar item, I'm calling request data. From there, I'm creating an instance of my async task and executing it, passing in that URI. When the async task object executes its do and background method, that's calling the static method HTTP manager .get data. That executes the request and gets the content from the web and returns the resulting string. When that's done, I'm returning that content from do and background. That content is returned to on post execute by the async task. From there, I'm calling update display and displaying the result in the app. So it's a lot of methods that are being called one at a time, but if you understand the sequence of the calls, you'll see how you can put together this code for any purpose you like.